Mike. Welcome. We're on the red couch with Andrea Blanche, the president and director of the Center for Religious Tolerance. So people like Ibtisam yeah. and Jackie Ogaga yeah. and other women in the world that want peace, it, you were talking about how they have different ways, women have different ways of thinking. They're holistic thinkers. It's true. I'm, I'm just kind of sort of seeing this as a pattern as we've um, expanded. You know, we started in Israel and the West Bank, and we have this project in Kenya now, and just this year we're starting to work with some women in Honduras, mm. uh, and with the possibility of a, of a project in uh, West Java and in Indonesia. And what I'm seeing emerge from their ideas, um, because we, we try to support their ideas. We don't have our own you know, answers to their problems. It's they, the, the proposals that they're coming up with look very similar. Huh. And um, some of the ways they look similar is they start by bringing the women together and um, just get it, giving them a chance to talk giving them a chance to talk about their own realities, what are the issues facing them, to, to gather strength from each other. Mm -hmm. And we know how mm -hmm. women work, right? Mm -hmm. We work in a circle, yeah. you know? We, we like to get together and share, and we draw strength from each other. So that's the first thing. And then they seem to be willing, almost, almost um, unable to do it any, any other way. They look at all of the complex uh, issues that are facing them. Mm. And they think, well, we have to sort of work on all of these problems at once because they're all related. Like, so, like the economic yeah, issues, right. the okay. violence, the everything. Yeah, so the women in Kenya, they, they um, started by talking about um, domestic violence situations, ex violence they had experienced in their home, in their community, economic exploitation. And um, so that, that was their initial focus, but they very quickly realized that, well, you know, it doesn't do any good to end domestic violence if there's no maternal health and mm -hmm. we can't even get any basic health care for women's issues. And how can we really be empowered if we don't have any source of income? <laughs> so we have to work on uh, income generation because we can't move out of where we're stuck. So they're gradually working on all of those things. And it's um, the it's sort of the courage to tackle it all, right. uh, which can be daunting. Mm. And I see a lot of people in the West, and, and men in particular, who want to sort of narrow, let's focus on one piece of this so we can lick this piece over here and we can really do it and do it right. Right. It, doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. They all at affect the each other. Level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can't separate them because they all affect each other. And women seem sort of more in tune with that. And as I said, they have the courage to say, well, it's okay, we're just going to do it all. You know, we might not do it all tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It might take us the rest of our lifetime mm -hmm. to do this, mm -hmm. but that's the way it has to happen. So that's the way they, they kind of move forward. Yeah. yeah. What's exciting to me is that you work inter internationally, yeah. but then right here in Sarasota, you helped start a group, which I love the acronym for WIN, Women's Interfaith Network. Right. And that's a group of women from all different faiths, all different yeah. traditions. Yeah. And what do they do together? Yeah, that's a great story, too, because um, it shows how we learn from each other. Mm. You know, that's what that's what women do. Um, Alana Rosenman, uh, who I mentioned earlier, was yeah. over visiting one day. And at that point, um, she had spent a couple of weeks with me here in Sarasota. At that point, we were working only in Israel. Uh, we hadn't expanded to other countries, and we weren't doing anything in this country. And uh, we were talking about how powerful the women's interfaith work was in Jerusalem and in Israel, and how prior to this, Palestinian Muslim women and Jewish Israeli women had really had no forums to meet each other, mm -hmm. and how powerful it was for them to just get to know each other and build relationships. And we started thinking and realized, well, you know, things are pretty segregated here too. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have a mosque in town and I knew one of the women in the mosque um, through, an, through a, um, another connection, but most of my friends here in Sarasota had never met a Muslim woman. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, 
Um, and actually, it was Alana who sort of threw down the gauntlet, and she said, you know, Andy, if, if I can do this in Jerusalem, you could do it in Sarasota. And I uh, said, yeah, you're probably right. I think we should. So we got some women together and uh, uh, started with Jewish, Muslim, and Christian women because that was the context we were working with in Israel. And uh, it only took one meeting for them to say, this is fun. <laughs> We've never That's sat great. in a room with a Muslim woman and been able to talk with her. Mm. You know, why does she wear the hijab? What does it feel like? Does she get stared at? Does she feel, you know, just the kinds of things women would, mm. would share with each other. And um, people loved it. And mm. they said, well, we got to do more of this. So uh, they formed this group uh, and gradually expanded. There were probably about 20 uh, to start with. Um, and they started by doing service projects in the community because they said that's something that all three religions had in common, right. you know, the um, importance of serving your fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. And then they started doing lectures and having speakers. They got involved um, with social activism, and if there's an instance of anti-Semitism or anti-Islamic, and there's been a lot of anti-Islamicism uh, in the last few years, mm -hmm. they will together figure out a strategy to fight back. Wow. So um, To stand together. To stand together to say, Sarasota is a better community than this. We will not tolerate yeah. uh, hate crimes and bigotry in our mm -hmm. community. So they've, uh, over time, oh man, they have over, over 100 members now, and I think maybe, 10 or 12 different religions and, and uh, um, faith wow. traditions that are represented, and um, huh. they're fantastic. Yeah. So let's say I wanted to start something in my community, or someone wants yeah. to start something in their own community. Yeah. What are just some simple things that people can do just to get started? Okay, so the first thing I would say is uh, if you think you have a good idea, put it away. Your job as an organizer is not to convince people to do your good idea. Your, your job is to bring people together and facilitate them so that they can come up with a solution mm. or an idea that they want to implement. Mm. You know, all sustainable change comes from the people most affected. Mm. It doesn't come from you. I learned this from my friends in the disability rights community in a, another part of my life who used to say, nothing about us without us. Mm. The answers have to come from the people. Right. So that's the first thing. Just yeah. um, put it away, get people together. And don't worry, your idea won't get lost. Yeah. You're not going to lose it. It's going to come back into the mix at some point. But you want people to own um, whatever it is they, that they decide to do. That makes sense. So the second thing I would say is don't forget that you can't do it alone. Mm. You can't do it alone. And you want to involve as many people as you can. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll hear people saying, oh, I can't work with volunteers. It takes too much energy. It takes too much to support them. It's easier just to do it myself. Well, you know, it might be easier to do it yourself, but think of what you're losing. Mm. Everybody who volunteers, everybody who does one little piece is bringing their energy right. to your change effort. Mm -hmm. And that's really what you want. And by the way, the same thing holds true with fundraising. Um, a lot of times you'll hear people say, you know, go for the people with the big bucks. You know, mm. you want a big, you want to get the big donations. I personally would rather have a thousand people give one dollar mm -hmm. than one person give a thousand dollars. It might take more energy, but just think what you've got at the end of the day. You've got a thousand people who've signed up, right. you know, who yeah. said I'm on your team. Right. Uh, so in every way you can, remember to just keep spreading around the work. I would say the third thing, um, particularly if you're working in peacemaking and con any kind of conflict, so it doesn't matter what the conflict, religious or racial, between two people, between Republicans and Democrats, don't forget that everybody is doing the best they can at any given point in time given their experiences and their circumstances. Mm -hmm. No exceptions. Yeah. No exceptions. Everybody is doing their best. And so 
give him the benefit of the doubt and see if he can figure out how it looks from their side. Right. You know, because it does make sense. Their position, everybody's position makes sense to them. Uh, so just resist that temptation to write people off or mm -hmm. to say, uh, you know, they're just, um, they're, they don't know what they're talking about, because they do. You've been all over the whole world. Yeah. yeah. You've done incredible things. You've met people from all different traditions and all different faiths. So if you had a juicy secret to living a happy and successful life, what would it be? Well, my personal secret is that most of the time I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that? I think a lot of people get stuck because they, um, they spend a lot of time thinking about what's the best course of action? What's the right thing to do? You know, is this a little better um, path to take than this? I say don't, don't spend so much time thinking about it. If you're mm -hmm. feeling stuck, do something. Do anything. I mean, don't do something life-altering. Don't give all your money away <laughs> or whatever, right. but do something, anything. And then try to figure out what was right about what you just did. Mm -hmm. And then let the rightness of the action that you just made lead you into the next action. And don't worry if, if, it, if you don't have it all figured out. Thank you. You're welcome. You inspired me in every possible way, and I wish you all the best. Can I say one more thing? Yes. I'd like to finish, because it's the other thing that, um, I, that I think is a key if you're doing grassroots work. Yeah. And it's relevant to the show, and that is uh, a phrase that's going around a lot right now, yeah. women hold up half the sky. Mm. The phrase doesn't say women have the potential to hold up half the, so the sky or women uh, sometime in the future will hold up half the sky. They hold up half the sky right now. Mm -hmm. And we just haven't been paying attention to the special work that women do. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is find them, shine a light on them, and do what you do, Rachel. You're my hero in this. Shine a light on the work that women are already doing, and you will just be amazed at what happens. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on the red couch, and thank you for being the extraordinary light that you are. Thanks so much. Oh!